The particular form of reduction that I believe in is part of uh, Roger Penrose's uh, school of thought. And there, there are ties to quantum gravity and lots of other laws of physics that we still don't know much about. But that there are, mecha there are possibilities for mechanisms uh, to reduce these superpositions to concrete states, even without anyone opening the box. Um, so that's, that's my school of thought, but there, there are most other schools of thought mm -hmm. are happy to allow these superpositions to exist, uh, indefinitely until some observer comes along. And most other schools of thought, um, primarily concern themselves with the division between the observer and the observee, the thing being observed and the one doing the observing. Um, and that would be, uh, primarily the, so the Copenhagen school of thought, mm -hmm. which is, the most accepted uh, amongst physicists, certainly anyone in the mainstream. And, and in some sense, it, to some degree, we all abide by the Copenhagen interpretation because it's the only way that we can get out of bed in the morning. It's the only way we can get anything done. Uh, we, I think about it every morning. Yeah. <laughs> The, the only way for us to go about, you know, there are other concrete problems that we actually work on. Not all of them are so deep and philosophical. And the only way to just continue making progress is to pick a school of thought, go with it and go about our days. And the one that basically everyone has chosen is the Copenhagen interpretation. And it says that mm, these super these superpositions uh, describe what we know about the universe at any given time. And if we want to see if we want to know the state of the universe at some given time, then we have to look at it. And when we look at it, the superpositions collapse to one of the possibilities that they allow for with the probabilities that the mathematics of quantum mechanics tell us. And uh, to not really worry too much about the other subtleties, like well, what, makes, what makes you an observer and the particle an observed thing. You're made up of particles, each of which is undergoing this weird quantum superposition thing. Uh, is the fact, yeah, so, so it, it, it's just sort of, uh, shelves some of these complications and says, this is the best we can do. These are the... Hush child. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Stop asking yeah. why, you know. Yeah, um, that's okay. Just because. <clears throat> right. So, so we definitely, so we've, we've clearly chosen sides here. You're, you're, you're defending the... Uh, objective uh, reduction. Objective reduction. I'm going to jump on the bandwagon. I'm, I'm Copenhagen interpretation. So these are our nice. positions. Before we, before we battle on them, let's, let's, there's uh, maybe four or so others that are mm -hmm. that are uh, somewhat popular, right? Yeah. Why don't we s talk about what those say and how they differ? Sure. So, so probably the most exotic one, and, and maybe the ones that uh, popular science books like to talk I like about the, the most. exotic stuff. <laughs> yeah, the sexy theories <laughs> <laughs> is the uh, the many worlds approach, and this is you know this is the infinite universes, or at least many universes, and you know uh, like I said, uh, science fiction and pop science likes to get on this, and for good reason. It is it's exciting and it's it's um, uh, deep, if true, um, but it's just the idea that that we have these superpositions in quantum mechanics, and somehow when we open the box, something, some uh, force, some some object decides whether or not that particle is going to be up or down, whether or not the poison has been spilled and the cat has been killed or not. Um, to get around the deep questions of what is making, wh who's making these decisions, the many worlds interpretation just says they're all happening. And every single time there's one of these choices to be made, a whole new universe pops into existence. Mm -hmm. And that universe is the universe in which this other thing right. has happened. So you open the box, there's now two universes. In one of them, you saw it was up. In the other, you saw it was down. Yeah, right. exactly. So there's some, by this interpretation, there's some universe where all three of us are you know, presidents of the United States and, oh, and whatever we want to be. Uh, like, I'm sorry There's to three? the people in that universe where I'm in charge. <laughs> now, I got to be honest. I really hate this one. I really hate the many worlds one. It seems very ad hoc. It seems very arbitrary. And to me, it doesn't even really solve a problem. We were talking earlier about, about um, you know, types of infinities and things. And so, like, uh, the set of all integers is infinite, right? But yeah. then the set of all real numbers is infinitely larger than that infinite set because yeah. you have an infinity in between each integer even. Uh -huh. And so, to me, it's like you're going to take something where a particle could be in a large number of states or even an infinite number of states. Yeah. You're creating infinite universes for that one particle, mm -hmm. let alone all of the other particles. In it. So we're, we're creating an infinity, uh, an infinite number of infinite number of infinite but how, number how do of you, universes. How do you even begin to see... The, the universe itself is mind blowing. Like just this yeah, one, just this one, just this one. <laughs> Plenty. So, <laughs> yeah. so, so, so like on, on some level, it's like, if I can, if I can hope to fathom this one, then why the hell not an, an infinite number more? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's already too much.